coming right there. Oh, hey, Tactical Rifleman Nation, before we get in the video, I just want to take a minute to thank companies that help support our channel. Without them, we couldn't bring you guys great videos every week. This week, I want to thank SDI. SDI is a major supporter. We appreciate them so much. So check out all their online courses. You can take firearms technology and learn how to get into gunsmithing and other areas of the firearm industry. So check them out at sdi.edu for more information. SDI, we really appreciate you. All right, gents, this week on Tactical Rifleman, I want to talk about night shooting with pistols that have red dots on them. You guys know the deal. I believe that within the next four or five years, all combat pistols will have red dot optics on them. There's just too many advantages running red dot, just like on our rifles. You know, a lot of people say, well, I can't find the dot, can't find the dot. Optics break, glass breaks, batteries go dead. Yeah, that's the same thing the guys were telling me back in the... 90s when we first came out with them on our rifles. Fast forward, everybody runs them on their rifles now. You're gonna see these on your pistols in the future also. So if you're not already running a red dot, I want you to consider it. Now, when running a red dot, especially for night shooting, there are certain considerations that you need to take into account for night shooting, right? Uh, right off the bat, uh, you gotta ask yourself, what do I need to see to shoot in the dark? Now, if you're just running iron sights, uh, you need to be able to see these sights on the gun. Uh, so a lot of people put tritium inserts. I run Trigicon HDs. They've got little glass ampules filled with tritium, two in the back, one in the front. You need to be able to see those iron sights. Now, that's one of the benefits of running a red dot is that red dot, you're always going to be able to see it in the dark. Right? You're always going to be able to present and see that red dot. Now, what else do we need to be able to see? Yeah, we, we need to be able to see the target, not just that piece of paper on the range, but we need to be able to identify, is it a threat, is it not a threat, is it a threat that warrants deadly force, because not all targets do. So the guys that say, well, with my, I don't need a light on my gun because I have tritium sights on my pistol. I don't need a light on my gun because I have a red dot optic on my pistol. The reality is, guys, and there, uh, there are a lot of situations where you may not need a light. As a matter of fact, you don't want to turn on your light, compromise your position if there's enough ambient light coming through the uh, bedroom curtains that, from that street light outside, if there's enough light in the movie theater, wherever you're at, wherever this hostile situation presents, if there's enough ambient light, don't turn your light on. But you have to have enough light to identify, is it a threat, is it not a threat, is it a threat that warrants deadly force? So far, we need to identify to aim the pistol, right? That red dot does that for us, right? But then we also need to be able to identify the target. And that's why I push for people to run red dot, or not red dots, for people to run lights on their combat pistol. So if it's an EDC pistol that you're appendix carrying at the mall, or whether it's that home defense gun, you don't have a choice whether the lights are going to be on or not, all right? When that hostile situation happens, the bad guys get to pick when it happens, all right? So you may not have, you may need to have a light. You may need to have one. So that's why I push running a light on. Now, running a light on your pistols, all right, uh, the, the problem with that is a lot of these red dots have auto brightness on them. Right now, what that does and how auto brightness works is it'll have a little setting. Uh, some of them uh, in conjunction with a solar panel, some of them are on the side. But what it does is it senses light above, right? And it will adjust the brightness of your reticle. So if it's bright outside, it will brighten your reticle. That makes sense. But when it's really dark outside, up above your outdoors, it dims that reticle. The problem with that, though, when shooting with a flashlight is when you present, when you, gun's empty, when I present out, right, it is taking that light reading from up above me, and it's dark outside. But as soon as I turn on that white light so that I can identify friend or foe, the, the reticle was dimmed because it's dark out here, and that little sensor does not see the white light forward. So it keeps the, the reticle dim, and now you can't see it when you turn on that bright flashlight. 
right? So what I encourage people to do is if you're gonna run a flashlight on your EDC pistol, on your combat pistol, on your home defense pistol, you need to turn off the auto brightness. You don't need auto brightness, right? You don't need it. Set it for a um, adjusted, uh, first set it to manual brightness. For example, uh, on this particular Holo Sun right here, you've got your two buttons, your left and right button. Your right button, if you hold it down, it allows you to change what reticle you have from the circle to the dot, um, just the dot. Right? Uh, but if you use the left button, if you hold the left button down, it allows you to change from auto brightness down to manual brightness. Keep them on manual brightness, all right? That's just a tip, my tip for you today uh, if you're gonna be doing night shooting because it'll, it'll bite you in the tail. Every time we run a night range, the guys will be out there and everybody on the line turns on their flashlights and you've got a guy that just can't find his dot because it's still reading the dark sky above him. So I put it on manual brightness and always keep it set for what I call a daytime setting. Notice I didn't say daylight setting, right? So it doesn't need to be bright enough this, uh, so that you can easily see it outside. You should be able to see it outdoors, but if you're inside a normal house with the lights on, you don't want it to be too bright or too dim. Normal daytime brightness setting is all that you need for night shooting because as you present, you turn on that light, you are making the area to your front be bright enough, right? So now, um, going dots versus lasers, some people say, well, I don't need a light because I run a laser on my, uh, on my pistol. I don't need a light, run a laser. I can aim with my laser. You can, but again, that goes back to what do you need to be able to see in the dark? You need to be able to see those iron sights that aim the pistol or be able to see that red dot, but you also need to be able to identify friend or foe or a threat that warrants deadly force. That laser allows you to, to see where the pistol's pointing, but it's not giving you enough light for you to see whether it's a threat, whether it's not a threat, all right? So light with a laser, okay, uh, that's an option, but I, I'm here to tell you, it's always gonna be better to have a red dot mounted, that optic mounted over running a laser. If you're uh, on the flat range, flat paper, I got it, that laser, put that laser out there very, very quick. I can run that laser and I can put that laser, wherever I put that laser, you can see exactly where that pistol's aiming. But if I don't have my flashlight turned on, right, I'm not gonna be able to identify it. But even during the day, when I've got plenty of light, flat range, flat targets, easy to see. Now get out in the real world, somebody standing among a field of flowing grass or a crowd of people that's moving, and what you'll find is, People that are always waiting to find that laser and then move the laser to the target, they're gonna have a hard time in real life finding that laser. Always present with the red dot, always present with the iron sights, and then you'll be able to find that laser. Okay, if that's how you wanna do it, but I'd rather you just run a red, uh, red light. The problem with a laser for night shooting is smoke, dust that's kicked up. It is giving them a straight line directly back to your position. It is compromising your position. I prefer not to run a laser. I prefer to have a passive system, uh, red dot. Actually, I like to run night vision also. Now, when you are going to shoot, uh, it's just like if you're just using a flashlight with iron sights. Your presentation using a red dot is the same way. Again, pistol's empty. Right? As I go to present on that target, right, my, my grip is set up so that I activate that weapon light with that non-firing thumb. But as I go to press it out, right, I'm not just leaving my light turned on all the time. That's, again, compromising my position, and it's going to draw fire enemy fire against me. So we use the exact same presentation for night shooting with a red dot as we do for iron sights, right? Uh, all you do is you uh, draw, present the firearm. Once you've got it out, activate the light. You scan, right? You acquire the target. You identify, is it a threat? Is it not a threat? Is it a threat that warrants deadly force? If it meets your criteria to engage it, you engage the target. Bang, you follow through. Did I hit, did I get the desired effect? Is there anybody else that needs love? 
right? So you present, right? If you hit, but you didn't get the desired effect, bullets are, they're not that cheap, but they're cheap enough. Shoot again, shoot again. Eliminate the threat, then part of your follow through, is there anybody else that needs love? Search for other targets. If there are no other targets, immediately deactivate the light and then relocate, move somewhere else, right? Once you get to that new position, you're gonna present again. Present the gun, activate the light, scan, find the target, uh, identify it as a threat that warrants deadly force, engage it, follow through, turn off the light, relocate. Practice that on the range so you don't have to think about it. All right, but the key though is don't just leave the light turned on. You'll see guys out here doing reloads and just walking around, lights going everywhere. You moving around that house with your light turned on. Think about when you were a kid and the power went out and your mom was moving through the house with a, lamp, with a flashlight or a candle that was lit. She could be three rooms away in the kitchen and where you were sitting, you could see those shadows and the light playing off the wall down the hallway, coming up under the doors. And you could tell, even though you couldn't hear her yet, you could tell by the play of the patterns where they were moving. That light mounted on your pistol is going to do the same thing. Only activate it while you need it. Because this is an active light source that will compromise you. Now, using red dots with night vision is similar. Right? But again, there are considerations that you need to take into account. For example, uh, if you're running uh, binos or, uh, or quads, it doesn't matter. If you're uh, running nods that have multiple tubes, right? uh, if you're running quads, you've got two that uh, one angles at either side gives you better peripheral vision, but you're only aiming out of one or the other. Uh, I'll uh, center here, depending on which one is your dominant eye. So where do we focus these? Now, a lot of people think of it like when you're driving. You need to be able to see the dashboard in that vehicle, that Humvee, that Striker, that car, whatever it is. So you'll have one tube focused so that you can read the things on the dash. So you can look at that map. So you can look at the GPS. And then your non-dominant eye is focused for distance. So you can see across the battlefield. You can see the vehicles in front of us. You can see all that. Just like driving, Close quarters battle is done a lot the same way. You'll take one optic, whichever your dominant eye is, right, and you'll focus that tube so that that is the correct focus so that I can see that red dot crystal clear. I want that red dot crystal clear. Now, my non-dominant eye, non-dominant eye, you focus that for distance. Now, if you're just CQB distances, Focus it for the length of that hallway, the length of the room, whatever it is. And what that allows you to do is now when you present that pistol up in front of that eye, right? this eye, your non-dominant eye, has a crystal clear view of the battlefield. You're able to identify, is it a threat, is it not a threat, is it a threat that warrants deadly force? But that dominant eye uh, can cr crystal clear see that red dot. Guys, you can get long distance shots. I'm talking... 80, 90, 100 meters in the dark, no lights turned on, crushing the steel using a red dot. That red dot zeroed during the day is going to be just as zeroed for you in the dark running uh, binos. Now, there are other considerations for other setups of tubes. For example, a PVS-7 uh, night vision device, well, it has uh, two... Um, object, two ocular lenses, it only has one objective lens. They're basically focused down through one uh, image intensifying tube, kind of like a PVS-14 would be. But it is taking up both eyes. Now when you do that, you want to focus that tube for long distance because you need to have situational awareness on the battlefield. All right? Now what you do though is uh, your dot when you look will be, because you've only got one tube, your dot's gonna be blurry when you bring it up. All right? But it's not gonna be that blurry. So remember, so long as you can see the dot in the tube, it's there. If you can see the dot, the, the dot is on target. So if you're running PVS-7s that only have one tube, then uh, have it focused for the target and just bring that blurry dot up with the pistol. You'll still be able to get rounds on target. 
outside CQB distances, you're going to find it's just not that accurate. Now, here's why I'm harping on that, because I'll see guys come out to the range, and they want to be insanely accurate. So what they do with their PVS-7s is they'll focus that PVS-7 for the, the focal distance so that they can see that red dot on their pistol. It gives them a very cl crisp, clean dot for aiming, and the target's blurry. The target's a piece of paper, guys, when they're at the range. They know it's there. They've been shooting it all day long, but with that crisp dot on the pistol, they can get hits wherever they want. That's fine for on the flat range. The reality is, real life, it is more important for you to ID the target. Is it a threat that warrants deadly force? Is it not? You can't just go around praying and spraying, right? So get away from the pew pew guy thing and do the right thing. And if you practice, if that's all you own is a PVS-7, single tube, you can get by with that. Now, what a lot, you don't see PVS-7s too often anymore. If someone's running single tube, more than likely what you're seeing him running is they're running a PVS-14, right? PVS-14 is one tube, but you have the choice. You can actually swing the swing arm and put it over one eye or the other eye. Now, um, this gives you advantages. Some people prefer it over their dominant eye. Some guys actually prefer it over their non-dominant eye. Here's why. Um, Personal preference is what it comes down to. Z Durham, for example, likes it over his non-dominant eye. Other guys like it over their dominant eye so that they can see better that visible or that, uh, rather, that IR laser on their M4. Okay, personal preference up to you. Now, one thing I will say is if you're going to run it over your non-dominant eye, have that set for infinity, all right? And for example, Let's say I'm left eye dominant, and I have it right here. I have this one set for infinity, all right? Set for infinity, I can see the battlefield. I can identify, is it a threat? Is it not a threat? Is it a threat that warrants deadly force? But when that time comes and I go to present that pistol, I bring the pistol up underneath my uh, dominant eye, my left eye, and what that does is now my my dominant eye that does not have a night vision device in the way is able to see that dot crystal clear. You're going to see it crystal clear, crystal clear. It's right there. It's ready to go, right? So you're going to be as accurate with it as you are during the day with that dominant eye, right? As far as that IDing the target, you're able to do that with that on that side. Understand if you, uh, a lot of people prefer to have the nod over their dominant eye. Okay, that's fine. Just understand, uh, if you're going to do that, you need to have the nod focused at distance so you still have situational awareness on the battlefield. If that's the case, that's fine. Just remember, when you go to bring that pistol up underneath that dominant eye, you're bringing it up in front of that night vision tube. All right? It's going to bloom a little bit. Yes, it will. It's going to be blurry a little bit. Yes, because it's not focused correctly. But so long as you're seeing that red dot, blurry or not blurry, if you see the red dot inside the optic, guys, it's on target. It is, it is on target, right? So you're, you're gonna be able to get good shots with these things, you really are. All right, so what brightness do you put your dot for, for night shooting? All right, everybody wants to dim it so they can see it or make it bright enough so they can see it. Yeah, you're, the reality is you're gonna have time to do that. But what about while well, you're traveling around, on, let's say on that operation, you're the military guy getting ready to get on the helicopter, you're that SWAT guy that's getting ready to get in the back of the van, and you're gonna go drive and deliver that high-risk warrant during hours of limited visibility. At what brightness do you set the brightness of your red dot? I appreciate you asking, um, because if you have it too bright, it's going to bloom out in your night vision devices. Okay, uh, there's, there's truth to that, but here's my take on it. My take is, at, it doesn't matter if it's too bright. At any given moment, while well, you're coming in, you've got your Batman mask on, your night vision goggles down, you're moving in stealth. As soon as you come through that front door, what's to keep the bad guys from turning all the lights on. 
What's to keep the wife from turning the lights on? All right. Um, so my point by saying that is if you're running night vision um, and all of a sudden somebody turns the, not, turns the lights on, that's why they have, uh, they, they quickly flip up. All right. It's so you can literally go white light right away. On these, you can flip one out of the, just one up and just run it like that. The PVS 14s, same thing. You don't have to push a button or nothing. That mount flips up and now you're back to running white light. There's the advantage of that. And that's the way those nods are designed. Right? So if all of a sudden you flip that up, remember, because that takes time, and you've got your dot dimmed so much that it was perfect for night vision, but now you don't have night vision. Now remember, you've already wasted time in the middle of the gunfight. You might be in the same room with the bad guys. You've now had to waste time flipping up your night vision. Now you're wanting to waste more time adjusting uh, brightness on your optic. No, you, you just don't have time for that. So my personal recommendation, uh, even for ops where you're running blacked out, Run your red dots set on that daytime brightness, wherever you run it for daytime, right? So it's bright enough to be used in the room. If they turn all the lights on, it should be bright enough for me to be able to see that dot right now, right? Should be able to use it. Now, because I, the reality is I'm getting ready to put it into my holster and forget about it. That pistol is my backup, right? Now, once I've got the night vision on and whatever it is, if I have to draw that pistol while I'm still under nods, it might be a little too bright, but I'm still able to use it. The reality is, is the night vision will keep it from blooming out. If I'm having to draw and turn my weapon light on because I don't have night vision, I still want it bright enough. Right? Don't dim it down just so you can see it in the dark. Because the reality is you're going to turn on that white light or somebody else is going to turn on that white light. Again, keep it, um, keep it at the correct brightness, guys, all right? All right, so again, there's a lot of considerations for doing night shooting with pistols that have red dots on them. A lot of it's trivial. A lot of it you wouldn't even think about. But... Do these little tips, have it the correct brightness, practice how to present with it, practice how to use it with whatever weapon lights you have, whatever night vision you have, but you've got to practice with it. What you'll find is you're going to become a much more lethal weapon system because it's not just having a sexy gun. It's not just having a sexy optic. It is a complete package, the correct ammo in the correct firearm so that it's reliable a good light that is reliable, the good optics, but more importantly, you've that monkey that you're going to hook to the back of it, what you have up here, that knowledge, that's going to be the best tool that you have in that gunfight. So anyways, that's all we have for tonight. I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, leave the comments below. You know I read all of them. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.